Have any of you ever legitimately thought something you had seen online was cursed? Not in a, ha that's so cursed kind of way, but the, something has entered into my life that I will not be unseeing anytime soon kind of way. I would compare the feeling to maybe seeing the picture of Smile Dog for the first time, or Jeff the Killer. Now that you've seen this photo, you better get to work on digging your early grave. There was a bit of that feeling in last week's video when we covered the Boiled One phenomenon but I was so intrigued that I knew I had to take a deep dive and check out the other works on this channel. It looks like everything here is either a one-off analog horror with the exception of our Toe series. I highly recommend checking out this channel and all its content before perusing on over here to this discussion about them all. But if you managed to miss the last video, we went over arguably the most disturbing entry in this list of videos, the Boiled One Phenomenon. In that entry, we learn about this entity known as Fen228, who once seen in a broadcast hijack, sent over 500 victims into a pseudocoma, or in more simpler terms, locked-in syndrome. This is basically sleep paralysis, except there is no escape from it. You live your entire life stuck with no ability to move a single limb. Some real scary stuff, and coming from someone who has had their own large handful of sleep paralysis experiences, this is surely hitting too close to home. And I gotta say, all the thumbnails I am seeing for the rest of these videos don't have me much at ease. But as always, we have to put on our hazmat suits so that we can keep ourselves protected. You have your hazmat suit, right? Right? But before I let you get too far, just wanted to say if you're new here and enjoy what you're watching, be sure to hit all those neat buttons down below, including the subscribe and bell notification so you can be a part of every new upload. Also, real quick, just wanted to mention that as of this moment, me and some others are going to be at Phoenix Fan Fusion all three days, May 24th through the 26th. Not affiliated with the event in any ways, just going to have a fun time, so if any of you already have tickets or are planning on it, you might see some familiar faces. There will more than likely be more info and details as the convention gets closer, but anyways, now you can pass through. Our first entry is only 26 seconds long, and doesn't look very inviting. Toe. Starving. Help. I don't know if it's supposed to be said Toe or T-O-E, but we're gonna make it simple and call him Toe. And I don't know how well I'm going to be able to describe what I just saw here, so I will just let you come to your own conclusion. <laughs> If I had to make any early predictions, and I understand I make this comparison a lot, but it's reminding me of the ring. This creature of some sorts is very clearly trying to escape his screen prison. He's literally banging on the screen, and it looks like he is getting close to succeeding. This is a great mini horror piece that can phase a whole lot in such a short amount of time. I also can't stress enough that creatures or entities trying to break out of the television is one of my personal worst fears. Not that it's ever going to happen. Yet. But still, we always talk about how analog horror works best when it is attacking your personal safety, making you feel uneasy and constantly questioning your surroundings. The demonic entity climbing its way out of the place it most certainly should not be coming from. It's almost like the clearest depiction of a place we can actually visualize as fictional, aka we can see the television screen, and then see that crossover where the scary creature breaks through the barrier and enters our realm. While movies like The Ring did a great job at showing that scene in a staple horror moment, analog horror is tricking you into thinking this is really going to happen to you. What's also interesting is this is clearly a human hand, and the title being Starving.Help is making me question the true intentions behind this thing. Is he coming out to hurt us, or is it just a trapped soul who desperately needs help? I'm going to keep my cards close by just in case. Who knows if we can trust this thing. The next video on Dr. Nowhere is probably the one I have been dreading the most. Has this ever happened to you? All the lights. This entry starts up with just a basic question. Has this ever happened to you? We then go through the regular basics of getting ready to bed until it tells us about this feeling of someone following us as we go throughout the house to turn out the lights. Well, not to worry, says this entry, but given what it throws at us next, I think worrying is the right reaction. Well, worry not. We have a brilliant solution. There's nothing following me as I turn out all the lights. Alright, except then I feel oddly inclined not to believe you. The voice in the background then proceeds to repeat over and over again that there's nothing following you as you turn out all the lights. 
While this entry and the last one don't appear to be connected in any ways, this is still a very tense piece of horror. Just like the last one, so much fear is able to be conveyed in this horror short that runs less than a minute. And it's crazy just how much is able to be accomplished in terms of building the scare and executing it given how little time there is. Sometimes it's the very simple tricks to horror that are the most effective. While this entry didn't connect to the last one, it's clear that the next upload on this channel takes us back to our Toe creature. Toe. Love Thumper. This entry is now making our Toe entity a lot less inviting, and I now no longer think this thing's only goal is to get out. We hear as he quietly talks to our cameraman through the television, just saying hello over and over again. Our camera person with the biggest balls I've ever seen proceeds to try and ask it what it wants. I have a feeling it wants you, Mr. Victim, as he starts to yet again pound on the glass in an attempt to escape. Except before a cameraman can make any moves, our toe creature successfully breaks the TV screen and climbs out. We then get to watch in horror as our character tries to keep themselves hidden, only to be quickly found by our creature. He hangs around for a little bit before doing a little dance jump scare towards the camera. After that, we fade onto an image which looks to be the view from inside the TV, with text at the bottom that just says, The body appeared untouched. I wonder who came to this conclusion? Investigators? Our creature? Who's to say, but it's clear that this creature managed to finally get what it wanted and break free from the TV cage and kill someone in the process. Toe Making Friends Our next entry following Toe has us in a very interesting setting to start us out with. If I had to guess, since it looks like Toe is trapped behind the barriers of the screen, that this is how he perceives the world. His view is this very nostalgic browser design from the late 90s. It perfectly encapsulates this liminal-esque fear that some of these old computer designs instilled. Perhaps the text we are seeing spread throughout is also its attempt to understand humanity in some way. These very simplistic phrases like, good children make friends. Is this entity a child? We end up getting brought to a web browser called Pen Palace, and it seems to be just some messaging app. The one thing that struck me as odd is the text that pops in briefly telling us this is for governmental personnel viewing only. Is this some glitch? Or do all these people have FBI agents assigned to them? Whoever is operating this computer has begun chatting with a user named Dominic9999. As the conversation carries on, it's clear that our user and Dominic have been online friends for quite some time now and Dominic has become increasingly more worried about how distant they have been acting. After a few more attempts to get them to open up, our user just requests to video chat. Due to the difference in time zones, Dominic says he isn't able to video chat because it's too late in the night and his family could get woken up. After some crazed persistence, Dominic finally agrees to the video chat. The last thing our user sends out to Dominic is starving.help, please, before the video chat opens up and this is all we are presented with. A beating heart hanging in an empty room. I really am not sure what to make of this. At first, I had a theory that in starving.help, we are seeing a victim who got put into the television screen, swapped by the entity that previously resided within, for then love.thumper to show us the entity breaking out and possibly shoving our victim in. The main reason for this to be what I thought was the fact that in starving.help, the hand is very clearly human, whereas in the next one, he has more of these spear needle-like limbs. Then I imagined that making dot friends was either our victim trying to reach out to an old friend given the situation, or it shows us that the victim in love.thumper is Dominic after answering the video call. Or I'm just sounding like an absolute maniac and not making any sense whatsoever. But that looks to be the most recent addition in the Toe series that Dr. Nowhere has on this channel. And since we already covered the Boiled One phenomenon in our last video, it's time to take a look at their most recent upload. The Boy in the Bath Our entry starts out, and the atmosphere is already blasting me in the face. Our character lies face up in bed, where all we can hear is the loud tick of the clock. They sit up and look at an empty crib that sits at the foot of the bed, thinking a shower will make them feel better. In the style of an old point-and-click game, we make our way to the bathroom, where we can already hear the running water, and I'll just let you see for yourself how this plays out. 
Why did you leave me here? I never existed to you. After that disturbing sight, our character slams the door shut and heads back into bed. We see again as the crib sits empty, even though that won't be lasting for much longer. I know you heard me. It was all your fault. I know you are all probably tired of hearing me say this, but that was probably one of the best short horrors I have seen on the web in a long, long time. I find it incredibly interesting when psychological horror takes people's guilt or their inner turmoil and personifies it into a frightening entity that then physically attacks the character. Granted, at this point it has been used a lot, but I mean, come on, it's still good when used right. The Babadook is one of my favorite movies ever, and that is what The Boy in the Bath was at its core. Analog horror has always had a psychological element to it, but this truly felt like it fell under both analog horror and psychological horror. I'm pretty sure it's clear that our main character, out of sheer neglect or pure accident, left their baby in the bath unattended, which resulted in the death of the child. Incredibly tragic, but the way they present the lasting effects on the parent is deeply horrific. It's insane too, because this isn't really a threatening fear, so to speak, but just a dreadful one. Our character is still getting tormented by either this real entity or their created one, but it's all just mental anguish. The entity of this child doesn't seem to be on this path of getting revenge, but in just trying to understand how they let this happen. And there probably will never be any understanding as to why the situation went the way it did. Each entry on Dr. Nowhere's channel is just as interesting as the last. It was very interesting to see the rest of their work after starting on the Boiled One. It's clear now that the Boiled One is the most threatening and harmful entity of the bunch. Even though the creator made it clear that some entries on his channel are just one-offs and are not all meant to connect, it's still fun to imagine this horrible world to live in where all these different entities run around causing problems. I'm glad that YouTube is opening up more and showing off these more short horror works. It's clear that the algorithm is heavily favoring long-form content, and so it's very difficult when you're a creator just trying to make cool, short horror stories. Truly a delight to see that this channel is getting all the praise and attention it deserves, and I hope that it carries over and we start to see a lot more. I can't recommend Dr. Nowhere's channel enough, so you should definitely head on over there and show him tons of love and support. And if you made it all the way to the end of this video, I thank you so much for watching. Be sure to hit all those neat buttons down below and leave me recommendations of horror content you'd like me to check out. I try to read as many comments as I can, and I love to see what you all have to offer. But before anything else, I gotta go buy some extra hazmat suits.